Good morning folks and welcome to another Pricking Iron review with Armitage Leather. Today I'm going to be looking at the KS Blade Punch Pricking Irons and I discovered these because I was looking for a decent hole punch and that, that's a different video and suffice it to say I was speaking with um, Nathan Dixon of Dixon Leather and he pointed me in the direction of KS Blade Punch and says, you know, the likelihood is they've got the punches you want. Um, they have a very good reputation. They've made uh, quite an awesome set of punches. So I ended up speaking with KS Blade Punch um, about their hull punches and then saw that they do pricking irons. So the conversation developed and ultimately that led to them sending me a set of four irons i have a 12 tooth five tooth two tooth and one tooth iron in 3.38 set which is 8 spi now looking they're available from um, bladepunch.com um looking at their site they do a phenomenal range you can have them from 10 SPI up to 5 SPI. Uh, so they do a 2.7, 3mm, 3.38, 3.85, 4mm, 4.2, 4.5, 5mm, 5.4. Not just that, that's a phenomenal range anyway, but not just that, you can have your irons in any combination between 1 and 12. So you can have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tooth set. If that wasn't enough, they do every iron in reverse option. So if you have a specific task that you're undertaking time and time and time again, and you require six teeth for that task, you can buy an iron with six teeth teeth at the SPI that you want in both standard and reverse and you can undertake that task with a specific tool. That in itself is phenomenal. Um, now you're, you're looking at what I'm looking at and uh, when I first opened the box and looked at them I was a little taken aback that they the, the 12 tooth option looks more like a little broom than it does uh, a pricking iron and this massive head at the bottom i mean what's distinctive about these is this is a 12 tooth option yet there are 14 component parts each tooth is added individually to every single tooth apart from the one tooth option um that that may be added in there or that may be part of the tool i don't know um but suffice it to say it uh it's a one tooth option but that may be that that that, that tooth has been added in there so that's a two-part component again two teeth head shaft four-part component why why would you do that? Well, why, why would you take something that's been around for years and years and years and totally try and reinvent the wheel? What purpose? So that was, when I opened the box, a little bit of a barrier to me. You've got this massive, massive head. And my first thought is, well, this is going to block my view of placement of the iron onto the line. And that, that's going to be an issue. It's clunky. It's big. Uh, uh, it's going to get in the way that, that's all I thought I, I just did not fall in love with these when I saw them at all um, I couldn't see the necessity for such a massive chunk of steel going across I couldn't see the necessity of having all of these parts um, made separately to put together and that was a little bit of a barrier then I used them and I began to warm 
to the tool by what it can do, not what it looks like. And I have to say, the the use blew me away quite quite staggeringly. Let me let me get these out of the way and let me zoom in to the teeth. Now, these teeth are ten mil long. The width for this iron, and they, they differ, uh, the, uh, the larger teeth are 1.8 mil wide, and the smaller teeth are 1.6 mil wide, so these are 1.8 millimeters wide. And they broaden slightly as you go up towards the body, and the thickness, they are sharp, but they are sharp for a good length and very very fine and they broaden out towards the top at 2.2 mil no no they, they, they broaden out at 1.5 mil they broaden out at the top this way at 2.2 mil that's a very very fine tooth and then I thought well if they are capable of producing a tooth this slim this fine perhaps that can only be done on an individual basis which is why all of a sudden then we have to add each tooth in afterwards thereby explaining the head in addition to that you can also have round tooth options so same head same shaft but different teeth they're not changeable by yourself that, that's at the company but certainly production wise that's going to keep the cost down a little I also understand that if you break a tooth in the first 12 months of purchase, they will replace that. So if you break a tooth of a normal pricking iron or stitching iron, that's that, that's done. Whereas with these, they are repairable. There may be that if you, you know, do it two or three years down the line, you may send it back. There may be a cost implication. But these are sleek, these are slim. They also do every single iron, and there is a phenomenal range in reverse. It may be a case that all they do is just loosen this. I'm not, I can't quite see if that's an Allen key or if that's a pin, um, and just turn them at a different angle. So you have multiple options using the same head, the same shaft. So that's keeping production costs down for KS Blade, and that's potentially then keeping the cost down of a tool of this calibre for you. Now, we can see there that the whole thing just is a massive step away from the conventional pricking iron, stitching iron that we are used to. And, and that takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. It takes a lot of getting used to. Um, but it's not until you actually begin to use it that you realise what this little beast can do. And what I'm going to do is have a piece of leather and show you let's have a look so a bit of three mil dyed through shoulder i'm gonna to have to turn this slightly because otherwise i will not see now this massive head doesn't actually get in the way i can see the placement of these teeth perfectly so I'm happy with that. That massive head also acts as a really nice shoulder for me to press down on the tool. So when I give it a tap, it's in. Now, one smack, I have gone completely through the leather. These things are so sharp. Three mil of leather straight in. Now, all of that is well and good. But this is what I was not expecting. That hole. I was expecting a large hole with distortion. I didn't get that at all. I got a very, very remarkably consistent hole fully penetrating the leather. That is outrageous this is the look of a pricking iron 
it functions like a stitching iron fully penetrating the leather but gives you a hole like a stitching iron with a look of a pricking iron go figure that's a 1.8 millimeter hole that's leaving that is outrageous one hit straight through I'm not going any further, I'm just going as far as the board. It's not actually leaving a mark on the board, not that you'd notice. But, look at that. That's outrageous, that really is. How can that ugly little duckling do such a wonderful job? That has changed my perspective on this tool somewhat. And we're going to have a look at how it stitches in a minute. Now, this 12 tooth option, every 12 tooth option, irrelevant of the SPI, standard or reverse, will set you back $150. That is £114. You can have the one tooth option, it's an all. I've, I've never been a fan of the one tooth irons. Uh, it's an all, simple as that. You can make anything. Uh, that you need with an awl. The two tooth option, remarkably advantageous for going around curves, that will set you back $50, £38. Okay, so they're not bank breakers. You can get yourself a set for under 150 quid, or for 100, just over 150 quid. Yeah, that's comparable to one decent high-end iron. But you can have any combination. I mean, they sent me a five-tooth as well. And the price range from the one-tooth to the 12-tooth, the one-tooth is $30, the 12-tooth is a $150, and then you have a different uh, price for each combination. And, you know, if, if, if this was too big I could go for a four tooth option if I wanted it a little larger I could go for a six or a seven tooth option they really have looked at how can we make this as versatile as possible uh, and this this huge monstrous head affair um, all of a sudden doesn't seem as bizarre when it produces a series of holes that fine but fully penetrating the leather now i have asked um, what steel they make these from and i have been told it's a secret but they have assured me that with 30 years industry experience they have chosen the right steel for the job and they are substantial there's plenty of weight in there so whatever they've used and i know there's a massive head and that's going to have an impact but whatever they've used they've used well it seems to be exactly the same steel that they use for their punches and their punches are phenomenal uh, you can almost punch through um, a piece of three mil leather without even hitting it it's that good they're well made they are the design is odd You've got to bend your head round that. You, you have got to. I've got to bend my head round that. But design, odd or not, the performance is beyond question. Look at that. That is absolutely consistent, clean, small hole. One point eight mil hole, all the way through, with no distortion to the leather. Let's see how that stitches. I'm not going to use an awl i'm going to try and keep this hole as slim as possible even though i dare say if i used an awl the leather would close up afterwards i really would like to keep the distortion of the leather to an absolute bare minimum and see how this performs if I can stitch without it. Now I'm using a woven polyester thread that's about 0.5 mil. So this SPI, 8 SPI, will take a slightly heavier thread 
but given that we have such a small hole I would like to see what it looks like with a slightly finer thread because even at 8 SPI we can increase and decrease our thread size to give different impressions of stitches. So I'm going to go with this braided polyester. I can't actually recall where I got it from. I got it sent as a sample and this iron has prompted me to give it a go. But this is giving you something special. This is giving you a high-end result. A very small hole, which means a tight stitch. That means the thread isn't going to ride. Wear against the leather or saw the leather. It's locked into place. The longer you leave the leather, the tighter it will get around the thread and the whole holes will close up. Folks, I am going to tap that down, give it a rub, we'll have a zoom in and we will see what we think. I don't think I really need to say anything else about these irons. I, I think that these irons speak for themselves. Look at the quality of that stitch. I'm going to do a double row stitching, two bits of leather, I'm going to prick from both sides, I'm going to stitch it and we're going to have a look at how that comes out. Set up with two pieces, both pricked from the face side and sitting together flesh side to flesh side. And I am stitching the holes at a cross so it's going to be slow going to find the holes so what I'm going to do is continue on as best I can and then I shall bring you back when I've stitched this together I'll just do one more so you've got something to look at and think about while you're waiting. So there we have a row of stitching from an 8 SPI 12 tooth KS blade punch stitching iron. And there is the back. We can't argue with that. That speaks volumes, no wall, total penetration, and that's what we get. Folks, I'm just going to go on and on and on about these irons. That speaks volumes. Don't be put off by the look. Don't be put off by the fact that it does look like the ugly sister Cinderella. Look at what it produces. Let the tool speak for itself. That's phenomenal. And I don't think it's an unreasonable price for what you get from it. Folks, I hope that helps. Enjoy.